when Agastya and all the great minds of India gathered to celebrate the marriage of Lord Shiva and Parvati, the earth was thrown into imbalance. The mountains began to sink and the oceans were in turmoil. To restore stabilization, Shiva understood that Agastya Muni would have to go to the south to counterbalance the other great minds. Where the three southern states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu meet, just a two-hour drive from the city of Bangalore, Agastya International Foundation occupies a 172-acre campus. This campus is the main hub for mobile labs that take lessons in science, math, ecology and art to village schools and communities. On remote rural roads that ribbon the landscape, more than 50 brightly painted vans carry low-cost experiments that augment the curricula of government schools. The mobile lab is the only real lab many rural students and their teachers ever see. This is the largest science outreach program in the world. Instructors from Agastya teach school children by using models and experiments, encouraging them to touch and explore through close observation. The natural curiosity of children is fostered, sparking creativity as their confidence grows and learning is made fun. Mobile lab instructors are true change agents traveling 600,000 kilometers of rural roads and visiting 10,000 schools in a year, engaging children, teachers and communities in interactive learning. The goal is to permeate the whole of India with as many mobile labs and science centers as possible, a method approved by India's National Knowledge Commission. In the midst of rural India, Agastya's campus provides a hands-on science museum for children which has one rule, please touch, challenging young minds, sharpening motor skills and drawing on familiar stories. The Mahabharata is one of India's two great epics. In a description of the famous battle we learn, as Bhishma fell, his whole body was held above the ground by the shafts of Arjuna's arrows which protruded from his back and through his arms and legs. Seeing Bhishma laid on such a bed of arrows humbled even the gods, who watched from the heavens in reverence, silently blessing the mighty warrior. Children who visit the Discovery Center can experience the physics of Bhishma's bed of arrows. From durable models built for energetic hands and inquisitive minds, visitors to the Discovery Center learn principles of science and math, laws of physics, and our place in the solar system. Experts say that we only retain 5% of what we hear in a lecture. One young visitor from the major city of Chennai said, My teachers taught us about the Bernoulli effect last year, but I didn't really understand it until I came to Agastya today and I saw it. 
At one end of the spectrum are the durable, elaborate models used in the Discovery Center and carried to science fairs. At the other end are low-cost experiments and models that can be easily and inexpensively replicated. Filling the mobile labs, many of these experiments are designed by some of India's prominent scientists who have written books on low-cost and non-powered experiments. This is important when visiting remote villages with little or no power. Following a visit to Agastya, discarded items become the tools of their own imagination, leading children to correctly believe they can invent and discover things too. More than 500 children each day are brought to campus by the busload. The teachers demonstrate principles of chemistry and physics. Lessons in biology and ecology, as well as art and astronomy to support the curricula in government schools. They demystify the secrets of nature and curious students are given the freedom to ask questions. When two village girls went to sit under a tree merely to escape the sun, they began to wonder why the leaves of certain trees cooled them more than others. The encouragement at Agastya to ask questions led them to a project that won them a prize in the Intel IRIS competition at the national level. This confidence-building win has changed these shy girls and many children like them who are first-generation learners from their village. Agastya continues to produce winners of this prestigious award who compete with students from the country's finest public and private schools. Integrated learning, art, dance, as well as science and math are taught on the campus. This engages the child's mind and body so that science and math come alive in new and different ways. Traditional dance, music and yoga link the people of India to their history, to the land and to each other. Children gain physical strength and develop discipline, coordination and grace. Agastya understands the need for educating the whole child and encouraging creativity. A child's intellectual and physical development, grasp of the analytical, as well as imaginative thinking and inventive spirit, all are important. Art is taught on campus and in rural schools visited by the Mobile Art Lab. Lessons using art media, like pencils and paints, combined with objects found in nature, develop a child's eye-hand coordination and skills in observation. These are vital in scientific experimentation and discovery. The campus is frequently visited by experts who conduct research and, in turn, offer eco-walks or workshops in fields like biology, photography, robotics and astronomy. Placing themselves in the vastness of the universe has value to human beings wherever they dwell. Astronomy may seem far removed from day-to-day -day life in rural India. But with a few relatively simple telescopes, Agastya's teachers and their students can visit the moons of Jupiter. 
A ball weighted with sand and affixed with a mirror makes sunspots visible to the naked eye. Scientists who come to instruct teachers and conduct research on the Augusta campus have freedom to experiment with their own methods of teaching and to share the knowledge acquired over their illustrious careers. Teachers from rural areas rub elbows with some of the great scientific minds of India. In order to be a teacher, one must be a student every day. How well the children are taught depends upon how well the instructors present themselves and their subject matter. To spark creativity and curiosity, instructors of the highest caliber are nurtured and trained. Children are encouraged to ask questions when they are at Agastya. Because the teachers are being questioned, they must learn also as they help the children find answers. Teaching methods evolve as teachers themselves learn more. The enthusiasm and dedication of the instructors is evident. To these young men and women, this does not feel like a job. One teacher explains that she is no longer called just by her name. Now I am Agastya Madam, she says proudly. They enjoy what they are doing. The opportunity for such a fulfilling career in a remote area like this is rare. Agastya, by its nature, is a very open institution, moving towards a clear goal. Scientists and educators come to lend their expertise and train the teachers but they end up also taking into the world with them the energy and model of Agastya. While scientists, artists and other visitors instruct the teachers and children, some of the children are also selected for the Young Instructor Leader Program. This program grew out of a shortage of teachers for a science fair. Older children who volunteered were trained and beautifully demonstrated models and experiments to the visitors. Children are selected to be young instructors when they show special interest and skill. As the learning pyramid suggests, we retain 95% of what we teach rather than if we merely see, hear or read. One of the subjects taught by the young instructors is ecology, an important focus at Agastya. The study of living things occurs in the biology lab. The ecology lab, however, is the entire campus. An arid zone fit for few plants and animals when the land was acquired, the campus now boasts a near miraculous number of life forms. As living monuments to the resurgence of life on the campus, several enormous banyan stumps, which had been cut and long since abandoned for highway construction, were salvaged to see if life could be coaxed from within them. Some growth is slowly emerging, as it is all over the campus. Scientists from prestigious institutions across India and around the world conduct research in ecology on the campus. The excitement is infectious as these experts share their discoveries with visitors in a nighttime eco walk and delight in the abundance of nocturnal activity. A balavana has been constructed where plants are grown in concentric circles that represent birth, life 
and death. Based on the great Indian philosopher Sri Aurobindo's principles, the aromatic benefits produce healing energies and make the spiritual garden a perfect site for meditation. More basic lessons are taught in the vegetable garden, where children learn properties of the plants they eat and their nutritious benefits. A hill on the edge of campus is the site of three giant figures of a man, woman and child. Each maps Ayurvedic treatments for the particular parts of the body using the plants contained there. A show-and-tell classroom. Specific flowers and trees have been planted to create a bird and butterfly park. Now, there are hundreds of species of butterflies, flowers and other animal, insect and plant life previously thought to be extinct in this part of the country. Around the world, communities are trying to go green and rectify some of the damage done through years of taking our planet for granted. It is important for everyone to know the consequences of the choices they make and to realize the vital role they play in the ecological cycle. As ecology is the study of environments that support life, Agastya is the ecosystem for the minds of young children and their teachers. Mobile labs visit rural villages after dark and whole families gather at a central location, often illuminated only by the lanterns the vans carry. Communities learn about the importance of ecology, the value of Ayurvedic plants and other lessons useful in their lives. Instructors in turn learn from the villagers about such traditions as the medicinal uses for many of the local plants. Agastya also reaches communities through science fairs which come into town with all the excitement of a traveling circus. For a few days, young instructors demonstrate low-cost experiments and elaborate models to children from the local schools. Like the Discovery Center, the science fairs stress an interactive, hands-on experience. This is Agastya's best platform to showcase its greatest strengths. Among them, peer teaching and low-cost experiments. Like the mobile lab instructors, the children Agastya touches become change agents when they return to their villages. Through their excitement about furthering their studies, many children are able to change their family's view on the value of education. If children are to flourish, it is important to dispel myths and open the minds of adults so that they allow the Agastya instructors to teach their children. One visit to Agastya one day can make a huge difference, turning on a light for a child. Children are at the center of all programs, all planning and all methodologies at Agastya. The solution seekers and providers of tomorrow are able to think creatively because they have been prepared for that. Agastya knows how to spark curiosity in India's children. That is simple. It is the number of children to be reached that sets up the real challenge. What do you want to be when you grow up? For children from poor rural areas, their futures often have already been laid out for them. Purnima wants to be a biology teacher at Agastya when she grows up. She has an appreciation for learning, an appetite for discovery, and an aptitude for leadership. The Agastya touch has made Purnima positive about her future potential. She intends to be a winner of the Intel Prize when she is older. Since many children like Purnima are first-generation learners, such a goal is an enormous stride for them. 
Purnima and her classmates have been co-learners with their teachers in Agastya's creative learning environment. They have not only been provided with lessons in science, but with a map for living life as good citizens with strength of character. It is important for children like Purnima to learn that their ideas and discoveries matter just as their opinions and votes will matter as they become India's future. Agastya's presence in the rural setting is crucial in furthering the development of India through the inclusion of her poor and often disenfranchised. As the spirit of Agastya spreads throughout the country and around the world, it is bringing the rural poor to the table as India makes her mark on the global scene.